It's the Gita Interviews, the premier global IT solution podcast, where we talk to the CEOs and business leaders who are growing their companies through global partnerships. I'm your host, Emery Giositz, the Executive Director of the Global IT Alliance. Hi, and welcome to the GITA Podcast. I'm Emery Giositz, broadcasting today from beautiful, sunny Toledo, Ohio, where we're about to get two feet of snow. Normally, I'm in the Dallas studio, but today we're doing it remotely. And I'm really excited for my uh, guest today. So it's rare that I get the opportunity to talk with not only a customer, not only a colleague, but a friend in Terry Robbins. Terry Robbins is the Corporate Senior Vice President and CIO of STO Building Group, and he joins us today from his office in New York City. Hi, Terry. Hey, Emery. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm good. I'm not sure I could say I wish I was in Ohio with you, but... uh, (laughs) No, I think you're probably better off where you are. Just from a weather standpoint. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So thanks for joining me today. Um, You and I have known each other for uh, many years now. And when I get to do these kind of interviews with folks I know, it becomes a a conversation. So I know that I'm looking forward to it, as are many of our participants with the Global IT Alliance. So tell us a little bit, Terry, about, I know you've been in the industry uh, over 30 years uh, in various roles throughout that. Tell me a little bit about how you ended up at STO Building Group and um, what you're doing today. Sure, happy to. Uh, So I started my career many moons ago uh, in the media industry. Uh, I started my career as an applications developer for CBS uh, Network Television. And uh, that was an incredible experience to start my career in, you know, being in such a well-known brand. Uh, After that, I I transitioned into publishing and new media uh, and really started to broaden my horizons around IT and understanding all facets of information technology, be it networking, desktop services, telecommunications, and really trying to broaden my understanding of, of what was my chosen career path, and that is how to leverage information technology to support businesses. Great, great, yeah, that, so with with that many years in the industry, you've obviously seen, as I have, changes uh, plentiful, and those changes, obviously, we have to adapt to within organizations. If there's a couple of changes you've seen that you felt like were game changers for the industry, can you highlight some of those for us and, and how they apply to what you're doing today? So um, I'm going to frame that uh, really around the AEC industry, right? So after leaving the, the media business, I, I transitioned into being the CIO for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, which was my first time being in non for profit which had its nuances and challenges and differences than, than the media business. And then uh, after spending five years as the CIO at JDRF, I transitioned into the role of, of CIO for the Structure Tone, which has evolved into the STO Building Group. So moving into the AEC industry uh, was a bit of a shock because the construction industry has historically been behind technology curves. Uh, the, the inside joke uh, in the AC industry is the construction today is the same methodology and technology that they use to build the pyramids. <laughs> so, so that, that kind of sets the mindset of where technology was in assisting the AEC industry in the execution of, of building uh, commercial uh, buildings across the, the globe. So um one of the things that I've seen change since I joined uh, the STO Building Group is the mindset of our clients and our business partners. And it's really rooted in the fact that the construction industry, the AEC industry has been behind the technology curve, right? So our clients are used to having technology transform their businesses, right? So our clients are financial services organizations, mm-hmm. technology companies, healthcare systems, really organizations that have gone through a digital transformation, you know, probably 10, 15, 20 years ago, and have carried that digital transformation forward, right? And now when they have the challenge of building their new spaces, uh, be it in, you know, interiors, renovation uh, of a floor, Mm -hmm. all the way through the building of a new building that's a hospital, a data center, 
right? Mm -hmm. They're looking for the same technologies that they use to operate their businesses to be applied to the building of their new spaces for their workforce. So, so it's really been that push plus a recognition by senior folks throughout the AEC industry, particularly for us, my chairman and CEO, who both have recognized that the industry needs to evolve and that there's been a number of technology advancements uh, in the IT world that can facilitate that evolution. So, uh, you know, technology advances, advances, advancements, excuse me, like mobile devices, drones, 3D scanning, BIM, mm. um, virtual reality, augmented reality, mm -hmm. uh, the collaboration technology that exists now, and the aspiration for us to have smart buildings uh, throughout the United States and other geographies. Those technologies really weren't originally designed for the AEC industry. They, mm -hmm. they really came from other industries. But the AEC industry now has figured out how to use those technologies in a way that wasn't maybe originally intended for mm -hmm. those use cases, but are now helping us for digital transformation throughout the AEC industry. Wow, that, that's great. Uh, two things, that, that one for clarity's sake for our audience members that aren't familiar with the acronym, AEC, AC, what, AEC what are the- AEC is Architect, Engineering, and Construction. So in any construction project, right, there, there is, you know, various legs on the stool. You have the client, you have the architect, you have the engineer, you have the construction manager, right? And then you have the subcontractors, the, the folks that are actually going to be building the building or renovating the space based on the client intent. So those five legs really make up the stool of the AEC industry. Makes sense. Makes sense. And and the other comment I was going to make is not every CIO that I interact with has the full support of senior leadership within an organization. So it's very encouraging to hear that you're supported when it comes to new technologies and things like that. So that that's great. Um, you know, I know STO Building Group has has done some s considerable amount of uh, acquisitions over the past couple of years. Can you talk about from a CIO perspective the challenges in the acquisition and and the positives and negatives that you deal with in, in that uh, acquisition? Well, I think first and foremost, we don't look at what we've been doing as acquisitions, right? We've been identifying companies that are very successful and who align with our uh, you know, priorities, our businesses, our clients, and really their mergers. They're, they're an opportunity for us to take a very successful company and merge them into our successful company and ecosystem, and then start to look at how to leverage the synergies of the two to make those individual companies maybe more successful than they could on their own, mm -hmm. while also building our own capabilities throughout our broader enterprise. Um, so when you have a merger or the seven mergers that we've had over the last 36 oh. months, I think you know some of the key items for success is to get cultural alignment and cultural understanding of the merger partner and how they will fit into our overall ecosystem. Um, it's educating both the merger partner and our own internal subject matter experts on the synergies and capabilities of both entities mm -hmm. so that we're pulling best practices from the merger partners and, and, and what makes them unique and then helping them understand what is that we can bring to the conversation that will help them grow their business. Mm, okay. Okay. So, so those cultural alignment is, is really, um, you know, important to get that synergy moving forward. Uh, understanding best, you know, for both sides, how to share and adopt um, mm -hmm. what's best for each entity and is, is critical. Because you, you, you need to communicate the why mm -hmm. for change so that you have, you know, buying and adoption right. as opposed to friction, right? You, yeah. you want to make sure that everybody feels like the changes that are being made are better for the organization as a whole, mm -hmm. but also aren't detrimental to the merger partner uh, that, that has just been 
you know, bought into the family. Yeah, yeah. And I, I guess giving them that comfort level because they're in a brand new world is, is super important and everything seems to be surrounding technology. So right. if that piece is working, it gives them at least some peace of mind that they're in a good place. So uh, a, a tough task to say the least. So congratulations on that. Seven in that short amount of time is incredible. So fantastic for you guys. Yeah, um, I, I would just add on that. Yeah, every, please. Is on the technology front, uh, you know, the key challenges are IT security. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so you're taking a merger partner with their IT security ecosystem, right? And you're trying to, you need, you know, move them, integrate them into our platforms. Right. And, and so, so IT security, this day and age, number one concern, you want to make sure that you don't bring a leaky boat into the mm -hmm. equation and now expose the great organization to risk. Uh, application ecosystem alignment. Hmm. Successful companies have their systems that run their business. We have our systems that run our business. And how do we integrate those applications into one holistic ecosystem that really supports the, the organization as a whole? Right. Right. That, that's a great point and kind of leads into my next question. You know, we've known each other for many years. We've seen the innovation in our industry, the whole thing, some innovation that felt like it was going to be impactful and never really took off and others that have changed the industry. So when you look at it, you know, in particular, what you've been saying around security and everything else, what do you see as the next big thing, if you will? What, what do you see moving from a forward technology that will affect our industry? It's an interesting question. I, th I think if, if I knew that for certainty, I'd, I'd probably be in a better position with my, uh, you know, stock portfolio. But yeah, having said fun. that, you know, one of the things I, I see as continuing is the trend of technology for consumer to business breakthroughs. Mm. And what I mean by that is traditionally, you know, technology advancements usually were focused on business first, right? IBM rarely brought a technology, you know, te, you know, 20, 30 years ago to the market focused on consumers. It was, right. it was business technology because that's where the, you know, the revenue was, right? That's where the, the business model was. Microsoft, when they first bought, you know, built their operating system, it, it wasn't focused on home PCs, right? right? It was focused on where they... That has shifted, right? The, it's, it's technology that's being introduced in the consumer side mm -hmm. that is now being adapted into the business world. Right. I, I think you know, the number one um, <clears throat> example of that is mobile devices. I, I, I don't believe, right, that IBM, I mean, I'm sorry, Apple and, and um, others thought about their mobile devices as being business first, right? It was consumer. Right, right. Right. So, so I think that trend is going to continue. Um, you know, some of the technology that I'm, I'm curious about in terms of advancing is, you know, what's the next mobile device solution, right? What's mm. that next sea change? Um, I believe the, you know, the power of bandwidth is, is, is what's going to drive those next technologies. You know, so, as, as 5G expands and, and more and more bandwidth is brought to consumers, it's going to give consumers the ability to you know, embrace uh, technology broader and deeper and, and more sophisticated. I, I believe uh, augmented reality and virtual reality will continue to take off. Right. Uh, today, you know, we see 3D, right? 3D is huge. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, we see 3D and 2D, right? right? So right. 3D is, is being displayed on screens. What I possibly could see in the future is one day, your house, my house, we have 3D studios, right? right? So instead of seeing 3D on a TV set, there might be some multiple cameras and we set up a studio in our house with some space that allows 3D to be to be brought in that way. So we're, we're truly seeing stuff in 3D. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that, you know, that would be something um, I'm sure, I'm sure the kids will get to that, that technology before we do, but that would be, uh, that would certainly be something. And, you know, when you talk about the advancement of technology, I think that 
businesses so had to evolve so quickly and and you know you guys have multiple locations throughout the US you have multiple locations around the world let's talk a little bit about the pandemic and and how all the plans that you might have had for those years that we first saw covid and experienced it how that changed your plans uh, how they're still potentially changing your plans today can you can you give me a little color around that Sure. Um, it it kind of goes hand in hand with the nature of the construction industry, the AEC industry, and, and the culture there is an on-premise presence in, in, in the industry, right? People are on job sites because you got to swing hammers and, and mm-hmm. you got to saw and you, you've got to physically be there to build the right. building, right? Right. Um, so the culture has always been one of presence in terms of the workforce, be it at a construction site or in our corporate offices or our business units. You know, people were always on site. That was the expectation. Remote working was not really an embraced concept for the construction industry. Yeah, hard to build when you can't be there. And 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 just culturally, even if you weren't a builder, being in on on site was something that right. the culture kind of aligned around, right? So in comes COVID, right? We pivoted. We pivoted 180 degrees, and within a, a, a week, we had a 100% remote workforce. Wow! Right. So that that's a big turn. I know a lot of other companies and industries went through that same same process. You know, for us, it was it was uh, uh, created a need to do IT security acceleration. Mm-hmm. So so transforming our workforce out to be a mobile workforce or remote workforce. We, we, we didn't, we weren't aligned from a capacity standpoint, from a security posture to, to allow that to happen. Um, you know, and, but we had to pivot quickly to, to, to facilitate that yeah. communications and collaborations technologies accelerated. Mm, yeah. Uh, you know, virtual meetings because we were an on-site culture right. weren't the norm. Right. So we had to orient people uh, to, uh, you know, virtual meetings. And we had to we had to really work with our business partners to, to bring in technologies and capacity around technologies to support, you know, basically, you know, twenty five hundred people working remotely overnight. Now, were any of your acquisitions in um, play during the covid piece, too? So is that something else you had to deal with the mergers? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So wow. um, we had closed on a merger partner uh, just at the end of 2019. Wow. We rolled right in. Um, in fact, I was uh, out at that um, merger partner's offices in San Francisco, uh, you know, the week before uh, COVID really shut down, uh, you know, the, 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 the country. Right. And um, from that point forward, what had been typically – you know, in-person engagements around integration, right? Move, move, move remote. We adjusted. We adapted. I don't. I don't really believe that we um, missed any of our targets of integration. Wow. We just had to do them differently. Yeah. Um, things that we would have done in person uh, traditionally, we now had to figure out how to do that remotely while also having the quality of those interactions mm-hmm. be what they would be if they were in person. And, and there was a lot of trial and error on that. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of suggestions. Some worked, some didn't, which right. is the nature of, of, you know, innovating on the fly. Yeah. What an amazing collaboration. That's, that's impressive. Um, so when, when you see uh, the industry today, I talked to many CIOs, almost on a daily basis. And then through the Alliance, I'm, I'm always working with our partners and the prevalent topic these days are the supply chain shortages. So it would be everyone's gift to have said, yeah, I had enough supply to last me a year, but that's not reality. So tell me a little bit about how you navigate the supply chain uh, concerns that you're seeing today with your partners. So, so for our business, right, supply chain is critical to us in delivering our construction projects. And, and, you know, throughout the whole pandemic, uh, we work directly with our purchasing and business partners to, to really help them understand the supply chain 
better than they ever had to before. And, and so IT really supported that effort for, for our, our business. But then more specifically to how did supply chain impact our IT environment internally? Right. You know, delays of six months on critical components really, you know, put a shock to your system. Mm-hmm. So what, what we did was we, we ramped up our orders to get them into the pipeline, knowing that we had six months of probably delays on delivery. Mm-hmm. And then what we did is we, we have an annual replacement cycle, refresh of much of our hardware. We, we put that all on hold and pushed that out. Mm-hmm. And then as the supply chain started to trickle in, rather than doing proactive replacements of technology, if the technology was still, you know, valid and and functional and right. Right, we left it in place sure right and then what we did is the is used what we built up in inventory to to really deal with new hires because mm-hmm. we've grown dramatically not just through the mergers but through organic growth so we we've had a lot of additive people that we needed to provide technology to and also we dealt with you know someone machine, phone, iPad, whatever it is, breaking. Right. That's what we used our, our, our inventory for. And we haven't caught up yet. We're still in what I call crisis mode mm-hmm. in terms of, of our replacement. But I think we're starting to see it loosen up. And our hope is to really do a catch up on our, our proactive refreshes in 22 to 23. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I know so many members of your team that do a stellar job um, with their planning and, and with their strategy around it. So I, I think your team also shines through versus a lot of the organizations that I've talked to or dealt with. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I know that you you have a global footprint. You've worked with the Beckler team in Ireland and the UK. You've worked with Connection here in the US. You've worked with CompuGen some. Um, talk to me a little bit about how, from a global perspective, you approach it, the benefits of, of being part of the Global IT Alliance as a customer, and how that's worked for, for STO Building Group. Absolutely. So I think really, first and foremost, 80% of our business is US-based, right? So my, I, my IT corporate group is in New York City. We're, we're a U.S.-centric organization as it relates to, you know, where we do our bulk of our purchasing and where we have the strongest relationships with our IT partners. All right. So then when we have a, a small business relative in Ireland, in the U.K., in Canada, right, the, the ability to actually find a trusted partner right, through a trusted partner is key, right? We don't have the presence in those countries to really apply our uh, buying power that we have in the U.S. to those geographies, right? So by, you know, embracing the network and being part of the GITA network, we've been able to actually uh, project our presence, our, our purchasing power, our needs, to those other geographies through that partner network, right? So right, when dealing right. with, you know, a, a Gita partner in, in the UK, they don't look at us as, oh, you're buying just a couple of units, right? We're, we're, we're being looked upon as, as what we are to that whole network. So yeah. it, it, is, it is very important to, to us to be able to trust that, that we are getting the level of service and partnership across our geographies. Great, great. Thanks for that. Thanks for that insight. So, so kind of a personal question here. When you look at all the things you've talked about, very impressive career, very impressive uh, past couple of years, what you've done with uh, STO Building Group. Um, however, there has to be something in your career that you look at as, as a significant moment, a proud moment that you could look back on and say, this was really, really a great thing. Can you shed some light on that for us and, and tell us one of those stories? Um, so, I'm not going to really focus on a specific accomplishment as much as what I'm most proud of is my ability to understand new businesses and translating and understanding how to increase value to those businesses. Mm. All right. To me, you know, partnering with others throughout my organization to achieve mutual success is what makes me proud every day. Mm-hmm. And, and the ability for the folks that work in the IT group 
to understand the value of that in what they do every day, I think elevates their, um, you know, pride in their, what they do for the company. Right. Right. So it, it's really that, that I'm most proud of the, the, the integration of, of the information technology workforce into the business mm-hmm. and, and the business value. Um, I think that we've been able to contribute to increasing the organization's value proposition mm-hmm. to its clients and that we've helped open new doors for, for other clients. And, you know, in broad terms, I'm very proud that we've been part of the organization that's grown a business from $4 billion in revenue to $10 billion in, in 36 months. Who We've grown our employee base through those mergers from 1,500 people to 4,000 people. Wow. And all that without really disrupting the business mm. and, and really in, in, in enhancing the business. Wow. So, so that's what I'm most proud of is, is that we're part of the team um, that has really brought success to this organization. Yeah, that's, that's very impressive. Um, Terry, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. For those of you who are uh, listening or watching, I highly recommend you check out STO Building Group uh, and their website. Uh, check us out at uh, www.gita.com or on LinkedIn with Gita. And Terry, I appreciate your time today. Uh, hopefully it was valuable for you as it was for us. And we'll talk to you soon. Well, thank you for having me, Emery. I, I really appreciate it. I think this is a great podcast. And I also you know, really appreciate you taking the time to understand a little bit more about our organization. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the GITA interviews. To find out more about the Global IT Alliance, please visit www.gita.com or follow us for more great interviews.